So things are looking pretty good so far. We have an application with three components, one for the header, one for the content, and one for the actual footer down here. And we implemented state last time around, and we did it in our code under app content. So we declared a variable here called state, and we gave it one member, posts, and we access it by going this.state.posts. And if we want to change the state, we can never just do something like this. Where do we do this? So we can never say, say here, this.state.posts equals JSON. That won't work. If I comment this line out and come back to my web browser, looks good so far, but if I choose fetch data, I'll actually get a problem. And the problem is it's not going to work. It's not going to work just because you can't set a state variable that way. You must use that method as we had before. So restore this like it was using set state. And now if we go back, it will work as we expect. There it is. Okay, so we have that state, but that state exists only within the component where it's declared. So right here we have it in our app content component. So if I go over to app header and say, well, let's put another line in here. So I'll wrap this in a fragment because it has to have a root level element being XML and move this down here and then give it a paragraph underneath that heading that says P length of posts is this.state.posts.length. We're actually going to get an error, and you'll see it pretty quickly. Let's go back and look. And we get that lengthy error, and I'll just reload it so we can see the error a little more clearly. Right up here. Length of posts is this, but the error, of course, is that this.state is null. That's because each component manages its own state. So let's go back and get rid of the offending code so we'll at least run. Get rid of this fragment, and this line, and this fragment and we no longer need to import fragment. Okay, so now it runs again. So how am I going to share state between components? Well, that's accomplished in React a number of different ways, but one of the most common ways is something called lifting the state of a component. So let's do that. Let's go back to our code and let's go to index.js because what we're gonna do is lift the state to the nearest common ancestor of the components that I want to share it with. And of course, we only have three components, and their common ancestor is index.js. So let's see how we can lift the state. So the first thing we'll do in our index.js file is right after the class app extends component line, I'm going to put a new function in here. It's just a constructor function. So it takes one argument, props, And it does very simple things. First of all, we'll call super to get our super constructor from the default component. Then we're going to say on this, for this, we're going to call a function called handle post change. Because all I want to change right now or share right now is the post data. And that will be equal to this dot handle post change dot bind this. Okay, which looks a little odd, but if you've worked at all with object-oriented programming, you're familiar with this. We're binding one function to another. And finally, we'll say this.state equals, and we'll just give posts an empty value. Now, of course, that handle post change function I'm referring to on line 15 has to exist, so let's create it. Handle post change, and it will take one argument, posts, and we're just going to say this dot set state and we'll give it posts is equal to the argument we've passed to this function posts okay so that's all that's necessary right now for the constructor bit let's go down to the part where we're actually rendering our components right here so app header i want to share posts with app header so i need to pass it two more attributes posts equals to this.state.posts. We're just passing it a property. And handle post change, which is the function we just defined, 
is equal to this dot handle post change. So that's to share it with the app header. And of course, we also want to share it with the content. But all we have to do here is call handle post change is equal to this dot handle post change. So we're binding those two functions together. So that's all the changes necessary in index.js. Let's do the header next. So app header here, we're again going to give it a constructor. Constructor, and it will take one argument, which I'll call props. And again, super props. And this dot handle post change, even though we're never changing the function in here, it's good practice and it's actually necessary to have this, equals this dot handle post change dot bind and this. And of course, we have to have the function handle post change. And it takes an argument, which I'll call posts, and we're going to say this dot props dot handle post change props. Try that again, posts. Okay, so there's the function defined that is necessary because of this, this call to it on line seven. Now, down here in the return, let's once again wrap this in a fragment. Fragment, and I'll take the closing tag and move it where it belongs. And let's put our paragraph back in. P, there are this dot props dot posts dot length entries in posts. Okay. So the next place we want to change is, of course, is in app content. And there's a few changes required here as well. So let's go back to app content. And first of all, let's clean it up a little bit. We don't actually need this paragraph for on mouse enter and so forth. So let's get rid of that, which means we don't actually need the left paragraph or another function. So we can delete those just to clean things up a little bit. Okay. Now again, we're going to have to have a constructor. Constructor, and I'll give it the argument of props. And again, super props to call the parent constructor this dot handle post change will be equal to just as was the case in the last one this dot handle post change dot bind and this and that's all we need in the, const in the constructor so once again let's create that function handle post change now here we are actually changing this so posts and we'll say this dot props dot handle post change and hand it the argument posts. So what other changes do we need to make here? Well, we actually have to do one down here after we fetch the list. When we get our new value from our call to json placeholder .com slash posts, the value we're getting back is json. And we're setting the state locally here, but we also now need to call that function this dot handle post change and we're handing it the value that we got from our call to the remote API. So once we've done that, is there anything else we need to do? Well, first of all, let's go find out and see if this worked. So back to our web browser and we'll reload this. It says there's an error, but that might go away. It did. So we have there are zero entries in posts up here. That's in our header and we have posts to zero items long here in the app content. And now when we fetch data, this changed to 100 and that changed to 100. So that's how you lift state. It's actually not that difficult. Once you've done it a couple of times, it'll begin to make sense to you. Effectively, you're binding one function to another and lifting the state to the nearest common ancestor. And we only have three components, all with one shared ancestor index.js. So we lift it up to the app level or the top level of our application and make sure that everything stays in sync.